Hey, you're watching Fat Man DD1, you dingus. Whatever he said. Your boy. So, Spider Man 2 content, right? So, this is basically saying it's time for Marvel's Spider Man 2 to save the MCU. I don't know what the fuck that means, but uh, we're going to find out what it means by looking at the article, I guess. It's time for Marvel's Spider-Man 2 to save the MCU. While many fans are becoming tired of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Insomniac's upcoming Marvel's Spider-Man 2 video game could renew enthusiasm. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has entered Phase 5 with a lackluster third Ant-Man movie, but there is still room for the upcoming Marvel's Spider-Man 2 video game to rekindle the enthusiasm of Marvel True Believers. That, but the game is only going to get fans that like Spider-Man and like playing in the Marvel sandbox of Spider-Man in New York City. It's not really going to vitalize the MCU because the MCU, no one gives a fuck about it right now because it's just, it's gone on for too long. Like they didn't, they didn't stop and take a hiatus. They didn't say, we'll make the TV shows for about like a year and a half and then we'll come back and make the, the movies. They just kept pumping them out. And at that point, you can't keep doing that. With games, is different. Games take fucking forever to create, to make, to to build. You know what I'm saying? Spider-Man 1 had so many gems. Uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales had less gems, but it was a long Spider-Man game. It was fun. When it comes to the new Spider-Man game, what you're getting is a bigger open world sandbox. We could go to Brooklyn. We could go to Bronx. We might be in Queens. Like, we might travel my home fucking city of New York. Like, you can't tell me that sandbox isn't just beautiful. And you're dealing with maybe more heroes, maybe more storylines, more items to collect. I love the collectibles in the game. I do. I'm a sucker for it because they remind me of the old comic books. They remind me of the first issues, second issues of comics. They remind me of comics I can't even get because they're worth thousands of fucking dollars. <sighs> That's why people want to play those games. It's not because it has anything to do with the MCU. The MCU is its own separate entity because it's over there and the games are over here and they're not in the same universes because they can fuck around and be in different sandboxes. They can fuck around and have fun. That's why there's motherfucking... Uh, the Fantastic Four is mentioned to be in this world. That's why Stark uh, Avengers Tower is there. Like, There's so many things that the games can do that the movies can't because they can actually use a lot more characters and spider-man has been a big part of marvel's creation and their build-up not their success yet but he's a part of their success because he's one of those headlining characters let's continue marvel's ventures outside comic books have been largely successful and the MCU established a template that other franchises have tried to emulate for more than a decade. With multiple movies and Disney Plus Marvel television series coming each year, the MCU is more oversaturated than ever before, leading to MCU fatigue. The original continuity established in the Marvel Spider-Man game series remains fresh and exciting, and slower release schedules allow each title room to breathe. That's what people need. They like with video games and with a new title coming out, like, what is it? It was 2018 God of War. And the last game came out 2023, 2022 of last year, right? There was so much room for another game. The next God of War is coming out six years from now. It's it's six, seven years from now, the next God of War, right? There's a reason people wait for these games because they love playing them. They love enjoying them. They love the franchises. They love the energy. They love the fun. They love the ass beating. They love the everything about them. The fact that they go on and on and on as a movie franchise, you get kind of like, oh, I got to go pay money, sit, see. No, nigga, I can pick up my controller. That's why the Avengers game didn't work out. It I played the demo. It was fun, but it wasn't the long-term fun like the black pant everything looks so stiff everything looks so boring like i felt like i was hunched over like i don't care and that's not what i want to be when i play these characters that i grew up with so it's it's kind of shit especially when it's waiting for these games to come out like i'm hoping and praying that insomniac brings the knucklehead the wolverine the best baddest man at what he does to life because Wolverine is my top favorite character. Him and the Hulk. And other characters. Sometimes Spider-Man. But Wolverine is that nigga. And I want to 
put the suit on. I want to be in an open world sandbox. I want to be running through the woods, slicing up a creature or two. I want to survive. I want to be Logan, be Wolverine. I want to wear the costumes. I want to collect amazing items. I want to find out about Logan's past. I want to fight fucking crazy ass creatures. I don't want to have to wait four years, two, three years from another movie for Hugh Jackman to be in it. Like, come on, my nigga, like for real. That's why these movies are cool, but the games are better because I get to actually utilize this character. I get to slice and dice. I get to web around, slam into the ground, lightning punch a motherfucker off the building. Like I get to do everything I want to do because it's more hands-on. But these movies, you can't be hands-on, and they really don't do everything that the comics do. The games do it better. Not every Marvel gaming venture is equally successful, and those wondering why Marvel's Avengers is being delisted soon can look to the MCU, in part, for the answer. Don't look to the MCU for why the game is not doing well. The game sucked. The game was terrible. The game had Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix and you still fucking failed. Fuck out of here. I personally can respect Square Enix for when they work on what is it, the Final Fantasy franchise, and that shit does amazing. But when it comes to a Marvel game like this, they weren't ready for this. They were, they thought they were, but they weren't. They thought they were ready for the game, but they weren't. They were building some other shit. Them and Crystal Dynamics were doing dumb shit. That's why that game didn't work out. They should have given that shit to another studio and really gave it time and development. Fuck Bungie could have made a better fucking MCU game than Crystal Dynamics and fucking, uh, what the fuck, uh, Square Enix. Personally, personally. That the game did bad because it was bad. And they, they tried it. They tried it. The game followed the regrettable trend of games as a service to the detriment of an otherwise competent main story campaign. That story was also held back by its over-reliance on the MCU's version of the Avengers team. Marvel's Avengers was afraid to stray far from the familiar heroes featured in the 2012 movie, and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy was similarly limited in its choice of protagonists. Conversely, Marvel's Spider-Man was distinctly different from the MCU version of the character. Because they didn't rely on the tropes of the MCU so much. They just let shit be what the fuck it was, which was a goddamn video game. They let that shit be a game and really create and build upon itself. I personally think Marvel should look at it from the perspective of why the games succeed and why they don't fail. The version of Peter Parker in the video game was not a high school-aged hero of the MCU, but a somewhat more experienced vigilante working part-time as a research assistant. Yeah, it was realistic because he was... He was doing vigilante hero work and also being a part-time, I'm going to bust some heads. Like, that's the point when it comes to these characters. There was also relatability. Not everybody can relate to high school because the high school setting that Peter Parker was in didn't matter because they they tried to do the high school setting and they basically, we didn't even have enough time for that nigga. Like, he never went to his prom. He never he never danced with the girl. He never got the girl. He tried his best. And then eventually he was found out. The reason why I like the Spider-Man world is because who knew his secret besides Adrian Toomes, which was the vulture, right? I like that Adrian Toomes knew who the fuck Spider-Man was. And for them to erase that everybody forgets who Peter Parker is... I don't think it works on someone who already knew who Peter Parker was. Like, I already know who Peter Parker is. So for, for everyone forgetting who Peter Parker was in the beginning, to me, I think is wild, right? Erase that effect. But this character was someone in the games that you could relate to and love. And the fact that Aunt May, who dies in the game, she knew his secret and she was proud of him. But that's the one thing Peter didn't know that she fucking knew. Because Peter was like, you fucking knew? And she was like, I always known, motherfucker. I'm your aunt. You can't hide shit from me. Marvel's Spider-Man opened with the Kingpin's arrest. A villain who has not crossed paths with Spider-Man in the movies. The fresh approach of Marvel's Spider-Man proved Marvel games need to stop chasing the MCU. With other foes who have not been featured on the big screen. Like the Rhino and Scorpion. Also featured, along with newer creations like Mr. Negative. Mr. Negative's been in the comics for years, 
but the fact that they were able to take, they were able to use said character. I love it. I love it because that's, that's something that the movies will never do. That's something that the games have took in because they're like, yo, Mr. Negative in the comics is fucking crazy. Y'all want to use him? Yeah. And yes, let's use, I bet in the next game, they're going to use Dot. They're going to use Spot. They're going to use Spot. They're going to use him. I bet. There was too much, there was so much room in this game. And the one thing I didn't like about the Spider-Man game was I, I, I wanted the villain fights to be more personal. I wanted the villain fights to be more crazy and, and on top of it. I didn't like the final fight with Doc Ock because it felt too, you know, yeah, the producers are on your shoulder and you're fighting, but it felt too stuck in one spot. It felt too closed in, you know? And there was only a few things you could do in that moment, but at that moment, I wish more fights were kind of like that, but with a little more freedom. Like, I can really get to feel punching a bad guy, feel the the fear that the villains can give you, because... Spider-Man's villains give him a hard fucking time. And sometimes I want that to be reflected in the game I play. Like, I want to get my ass beat, but I want the villains to give me a hard time. And sometimes the Sinister Sticks, when they all came together, they whooped Spider-Man's ass. They threw that nigga off the ship. Get out of here, nigga. Like, to me, that's personal. And I want the games to reflect that. The movie just can't, which is a true factor. Vulture tried. The MCU avoided using Spider-Man for many years due to licensing issues with the movies, and the X-Men were similarly passed over. Insomniac's first Marvel game focused on Spider-Man and its upcoming projects include a Wolverine game. Spider-Man and the X-Men have long been two of Marvel's most beloved franchises, and by beginning their gaming take on the Marvel Universe with those characters as the starting point, the gaming developer does what the MCU could not. The MCU did a laudable job building up characters like Iron Man and Thor, but Spider-Man and Wolverine are more popular characters that were initially unavailable to Marvel Studios. Ooh, those characters are way popular. People don't understand that Wolverine, Spider-Man, the X-Men, they're more popular than Iron Man, Thor, but the, the Hulk was known, right? The Hulk was a known, powerful character. But he, the Hulk was popular. The Hulk was more popular than Iron Man. The Hulk was more popular than Captain America. Captain America was like Captain America. But the Avengers created all of these things to be more hands-fucking-on. And that's incredible, personally. The Insomniac games are leading with two of Marvel's most iconic heroes, and Marvel's Wolverine could herald an X-Men comeback in gaming. Beyond its ability to tell stories the studio is interested in, instead of focusing on promoting characters available due to licensing issues, the slower production pace of the games. Yo, the games have good, sl good production, good slow pace, good building. You can't beat that shit, unless you can and their overall quality, set them apart from the MCU. Keeping up with the MCU involves tracking three to four movies per year on average, and multiple Disney Plus series now add to the obligatory viewing for hardcore MCU fans. Like the Miles Morales spin-off game came two years after the original Marvel's Spider-Man, and that game's sequel is slated to release roughly a year prior to Marvel's Wolverine. You gotta, you gotta give it up to, to, to that. I don't, I stay up to date with Marvel because I look at it as if I can stay up to date, I can give you some of the news. But even when I get up to date, I'm just like, I don't feel like talking about this shit because I watched it and I felt like I had to watch it and then talk about it at the same time because personally it gets annoying. Gaming fans can easily complete each title before the next one is released. Yes, and we can sit back and enjoy it. Video games are a more active form of media than film and television, which also sets the series apart from the MCU. Each player can explore a fresh Marvel continuity, letting Spider-Man follow the Batman, Arkham series approach wherein dynamic, surprising twists are possible. Yeah, the, the Spider-Man got the Arkham treatment, and the Arkham treatment was the... <sighs> It wasn't the Arkham Asylum treatment. It was the Arkham treatment all around. The sensing enemies behind you, moving, fighting, punching, kicking, different costumes, storylines, finding treasure items, 
moving across the city, helping people, secret missions, stuff like that, right? The open world stuff. But also, the caveat was the fighting, the combat. I want enemies to overwhelm and beat my ass. That's why I play on the hardest difficulty. Yeah, I want you to kick the shit out of me. I'm playing this game on the hardest shit ever, right? It's not a Dark Souls game. I don't want it to be, I have to, I've played this one level for 75 hours for three days in six hours, six months. No, no, no. I want the game to be hard. I want the game to be fun. I want the game to be challenging to a degree because it's a Marvel game. I want to slice niggas up Wolverine. I want to web a dude up to a ceiling like like Spider-Man. I want to have fun. I also want to play a Spider-Man Noir game, but yeah. Common sentiments hold that each new MCU film or television series exists to advertise the next batch of MCU stories instead of focusing on its own. Though Marvel's Spider-Man 2 will share a continuity with Insomniac's Wolverine game, players can expect it to tell its own story. I hope so. Like, I hope to sit back and enjoy the Spider-Man story. I hope to sit back and enjoy the Wolverine story. I hope to sit back and, and really see more of Logan and, and Logan's world, right? I have, the f I have four issues of all of the Wolverine comics, and boy, howdy, I'm collecting. Instead of acting as one more piece of a puzzle that will not come together until Phase 6. In the past it would have been inappropriate to compare video game adaptations of comics to the film versions. Gaming storytelling has evolved over time. And the cinematic style of action game Insomniac has produced with the Marvel licenses contains every bit as much emotion and character development as any of the MCU films. Keeping track of the complex continuity changes of Marvel's comics over the years is a daunting task. Yeah, Marvel's comics have changed, so the older comics aren't the canon they're running from. She-Hulk, it wasn't Savage She-Hulk, it was Attorney at Law She-Hulk. And even the Attorney at Law She-Hulk comics, they weren't even following that. Shit, they should have followed the Savage She-Hulk comic books to a T and to a degree before Bruce became famous and he was on the run. They should have followed those comics because they would have been a better thrill. Mafia agents gunning down um, Jennifer Walters, Jennifer Walters' actress not being so unsufferable, bitch, and the whole entire writer's crew and directors not being fake reversal trolls thinking that they were getting one up on fans who loved the She-Hulk. I love the She-Hulk. I have She-Hulk comics. I have Miss Marvel comics. I have these comics. What hurts is the fact that they're killing these female characters and they're not giving them a chance to shine. And it's sad. And I mean sad because it's sad. Because as a comic book fan, I'm like, yo, give this character a chance to shine. Because they disrespected Shang-Chi and he was trash. Like, like they did good with Iron Fist Season 2, but they did whack with Season 1. Like, come on, bro. Makes sense with that. Information released about Marvel's Spider-Man 2 confirms Venom and Kraven the Hunter will appear. But players do not have to do any homework to understand the game's story. The clean continuity of the video games is far more accessible. It's usually better than the motherfucking, the motherfucking movies. The niggas can really just be like, oh, well, the, the games can do this, and the games can do this, and the games can do this, and the game. I'm like, yeah, but what the games don't do is they don't sit down I mean, what the movies don't do is they don't sit down and give you a breakdown of these characters. They give you kind of a quarter breakdown. You're over here like, well, I think I should mosey on over there and have my fun with that person's face. Like, nah, I need you to sit back and chill because Miles Morales was a good game. Like, Spider-Man Miles Morales was a good game. It was. Also, people are still kind of pissed because the game is called Spider-Man Miles Morales and everybody's like, why is it not just called Spider-Man? I'm like, well, because it's about Miles Morales, you fuckhead. With the introduction of the multiverse to the MCU, which now includes each of the earlier Spider-Man film series, along with the many alternate worlds depicted in the What If? animated series, the MCU is getting closer to the complexity of the comic books. This can be rewarding for longtime fans, but a game like Marvel's Spider-Man that provides all needed context in its own story is a welcome change of pace. Yeah, because I don't need to be, I don't need to do homework on which comics they're trying to take 
and at, uh, use them as an adaptation for a TV show. I had to do my homework when it came to the Batman, that Matt Reeves, the Batman. I had to find out what fucking movie this was going to be because it takes from the long Halloween and it takes from a other bunch of versions of Batman year one and a whole bunch of other ones. So it takes from three comics. So I had to sit down and be like, okay, what versions is this taking from? I need to find out. Right. And it took a, it took portions of each comic and, but it still became its own script. It still held its own story. And I like that. With the video games, it's different. They're an amalgamation of everything. Uh, the Arkham the Arkham Asylum game was my favorite, right? God bless Kevin Conroy. That game became a staple of everything Batman. You saw Batman, most of Batman's villains. You fought most of Batman's villains. But then you also got some secret hints, and you also found Riddler, and you stopped him, right? And then you got a taste of the Scarecrow's fucking toxins then you were kind of like a black cat would be there but she wasn't right or she kind of was and then you got a taste of killer croc you got to deal with actually yeah you got to deal with killer croc you had to deal with freaking what's his name bane you had to deal with a lot even i think even freeze no no freeze is the next game but you still had to deal with a lot and you could take a picture of What's his name? It was Clayface behind a, a glass. That shit was crazy. I was trying to open that glass for minutes to free him. Did not know it was not Clayface. I was like, this is, who is this? And there was even more secrets of who people were. Um, What is it? What is it? Oh, I'm trying to remember. Was it Zaz? Zaz, fighting Zaz, get out of here, dealing with, oh, wasn't, um, Hush, Hush was in Arkham Asylum, or was it Arkham City, it was one of those, no, it was Arkham City, but that leads you somewhere, right, and then the next game, you deal with Black Cat missions, you deal with this, you deal with all of Batman's Rose Galleries, like, come on, bro, like, there's a reason I love those games because they were the tier, the top highlight of Batman games. Hey, didn't fuck around. Yeah, Batman was stiff for a minute. But when you get into the combat mode, bang, 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 bang. That shit was like ping pong, bro. The games do it better because they throw all this information that the person sitting down had to research. They had to detail. They had to go through. They had to um, look up years, dates, times, like in Arkham City, they give you a long Halloween mission, bro. Uh, dealing with Calendar Man. Like, come on. Come on. I never finished it. The original game and Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, have established a take on Marvel with its own unique tone. And seeing it grow with the next game is a welcome prospect. Trailers have shown Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is avoiding the comic's recent redesign of Miles Morales' suit sticking close to the ultimate comics look. Unlike those comics, Peter Parker and Miles Morales share the task of defending New York City, where an ultimate Spider-Man Miles took on the mantle of Spider-Man after Peter's passing. In the comics, Peter Parker died and Miles Morales took up the mantle. Miles Morales was not a welcome character. Created by Dan Slott, still not a welcome character because it, it seemed that Dan Slott was creating character for his kids, but he wasn't creating character that people would like. That's why his uncle Aaron Davis was such a fucking dickhead. The origin of Dr. Octopus was given far more emotional weight than most depictions of the character. And players can likely expect similar heart-wrenching storytelling for Marvel's Spider-Man 2. While the tone of individual MCU productions may vary, they are largely known for a homogenized approach, leaning into quips and banter over gravitas. <laughs> true, true. It may seem odd to expect more serious storytelling from a video game than a movie, but Insomniac has set a high bar thus far. Insomniac has done it because they've set the bar when it comes to telling the story, but also they've set the dramatic. They set the dramatic dark music. They've set the the field and everything changing and destroying. New York City has gotten its ass beat, but they could create a game where you lose. Like, oh yeah, you lost. 
and you're and you have to go into hiding and you have to come back. There's been moments in the comics where Spider-Man doesn't win this round. He got to come back and he got to do it all over again to, to to get a W. There's been moments like that in the games and the comics and the shows. These characters do end up losing. And for you sometimes it hurts. Imagine you're playing, you're fighting Venom, you lose. He destroys you, beats your ass. You don't come back. And the end of the game is you'll be back in the next game and there's no traversal. There's nothing else. You lose. You have to start from the beginning of the game and you just have to do all the other missions you forgot. You can't do anything else. Even with Miles. Imagine that in the next game, you lose. Venom takes over the city, takes over city blocks. You get a form of shattered... What is it? Um, Shadow... Not Shadow Dimensions. You get a web of shadows. You get a form of web of shadows in the game. Bro, that's crazy. But I'm just saying, Insomniac can go dark if they want. They're making a rated M Wolverine game, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, bro. It is reasonable to expect Craven and Venom will be presented as fleshed out antagonists, akin to Mr. Negative and Dr. Octopus in the original game. Marvel's Spider Man 2 could borrow from darker comics, like the Craven's Last Hunt storyline from the late 1980s. But that was a buildup. I love when people cr love Craven's Last Hunt, but it was a buildup of years and years and decades of the character being out. You don't want to do a Craven's Last Hunt for uh, a movie or for anything else. You don't want to do that. You want there to be a reason why Craven is hunting Spider Man, why Craven's at the pinnacle of this moment, why Craven puts the shotgun to his mouth and blows his brains out. You want there to be a fucking reason why Craven is who he is. You don't want to just Craven's last hunt. No, there has to be years and years of buildup because that's what made Craven's last hunt rememberable for fans. I'm just saying. Where the MCU has grown more road than tedious for many, a game like Marvel's Spider-Man 2 rekindles the excitement of seeing a bold new interpretation of a beloved comic universe revealed. Let me know what you think of this article. Tell me what you think of it in the comments below. I fuck with it. Shout outs to CB... Is it CBR? No, Screen Rant. Shout out to Screen Rant. But I honestly think that the MCU is doing the most and the games are at the pinnacle of where they should be perfect fucking things to be created and be made i love it and the games will never copy the movies they should never the game should be their own thing they should stand alone create their own stories make us fall in love with these characters and just fucking kill it personally that's what i think but let me know what you think in the comments below uh i can't wait for spider-man 2 can't wait to see what happens make sure to like yeah, subscribe bitch. comment hit the bell icon to be notified for me to you remember to never give up never surrender keep on grinding Mad love. Peace. And I'm out. <laughs> flip flip, motherfucker. Shit. Damn been on drum. Damn been on drum. You little niggas gonna stop acting like, like my shit ain't the grill. Some of you one. niggas get your front teeth for grills. <laughs> I ain't loving these fake hoes. Room smelling like eight switches. Room service like 2K. NBA, I'm ballin' nigga. All them niggas falling like all them niggas. Talking shit, I saw them niggas. Now they daughter want a picture. Rough ain't it? Fuck famous. Yeah, niggas too real, got the most haters. Wrote a story, so Stephen Curry. How we feel to be golden?